Good day, dear colleagues. So, Alexei and uh, all participants of this most wonderful session, I would like to once again thank you for uh, invitation to talk as a speaker and yesterday as an operating surgeon uh, with a lateral lymph dissection. And I would like to wonder on the boldness of our uh, organizers of this cancer forum who said such a very rare and infrequent topic for, for discussion. Uh, so, I don't know about your case, we see just the first uh, uh, clouds in the sky and I saw a message yesterday that it was quite hot in St. Petersburg and it was even uh, impacted the founders of your city. Uh, so I should say that everything's okay in our clinic, it's our morning uh, shift uh, uh, and uh, morning round. Uh, and it's not the first conference, and many of us do remember this conference, and many of uh, today's speakers uh, were part participating in our masterclass, which happened quite recently, uh, two years ago, just prior to pandemic, where also uh, there have been shown different uh, methods of lateral lymph dissection using in the world. I'm not going to repeat myself and analyze the meta-analysis which are myriad within the recent years and there are a lot of contradictory opinions. So I would like to say that each of us, if, if needed, can find arguments for and against any, um, uh, just any opinion uh, of uh, leave dissection because we do lack knowledge in this area. Today we spoke about preventative limb dissection from the viewpoint of a randomized study which was conducted in Japan. It was done according to the patient selection, but the selection point, uh, just um, uh, conditions were wide enough and they received insufficient uh, lesions in the lateral lymph nodes and almost absence, complete absence of certain improvement in the survival with some trend towards reduction of local relapses and in after lateral lymph dissection. We once analyzed this data in our institution of proctology. Please pay attention to this wide range of data from 7 to 42 percent of lymph node uh, lesions. Then, alongside with Alexei Troitsky, we decided to conduct a trial, also a randomized trial. It was first a randomized trial devoted to lateral dissection. So 30 patients with extirpation were compared to 30 patients after extirpation plus lateral limb dissection. So the indicate, uh, indications are quite narrow, as you can see. If compared to the Japanese study, which I give you uh, above, so uh, more lowerly uh, localized and more advanced T3, T4 tumors, and we resulted in the following. The impairment of the lymph nodes were 23.3 percent, 7 out of 30 had uh, lymph node lesions. In combination with mesorectal lymph nodes, the uh, frequency uh, went up to 41.2 percent. And what was most important is that the lymph nodes below 5 millimeters in the lateral cavity uh, I mean, uh, lesions there were in 47% of patients. What are the conclusions of the first stage, or the so-called uh, uh, primary endpoints? So first of all, the rate of uh, lesions in the selected group is uh, rather high, and um, there are several risk factors apart from the ingrowth uh, of tumor and um, depth of this uh, invasion. So uh, uh, this is not; uh, th these are not the only criteria or re of uh, assessing risk. So we needed to continue uh, studying the uh, risk factors. Then we also showed the 
indications to the preventative limb dissection. This is the data. Please rem uh, remember them without RT. Now, if we analyze the long-term results uh, two years ago, we collected the data on these 60 patients, and we detected that overall survival and the difference in overall survival between the groups with and without limb dissection, which was uh, registered in the um, Alexei uh, doctoral thesis, it was still there longer within 13 years uh, period, so 16% of difference, which, as we see, it shows high efficacy of this method of treatment. This is uh, epoch before MRI at the moment. The major criteria, and uh, the, uh, most of the researchers uh, also believe in it, that size really matters, because Alexei usually says that size does not, but sometimes it doesn't. It depends on what we are talking about. It depends about the size, yes. It depends on what we are talking about, what we are discussing. But we are usually discussing different things, yes. <laughs> so, when it comes to colorectal, colorectal surgery, indeed. So I'm not going to speak much about that, uh, just to save more time for um, the results of my trial, my study. So the combination of limb dissection and application of limb dissection in patients with enlarged lymph nodes almost uh, brings to a minimum the local regional uh, the local regional uh, relapses and uh, uh, below eight millimeters uh, you can uh, come across these uh, relapses uh, after TME without. Uh, uh, limb dissection. Not only the sizes of lesions matter in the potential involvement of lateral group of lymph nodes, and the size actually uh, doesn't bring us to final decision. This is another very interesting presentation. Um, I, I would say that this is a group of Indian authors. They um, uh, writing about risk criteria, and according to this risk criteria, on, uh, they use the sampling of 43 patients that in four and more criteria, we have up to 80% of lateral involvement. Thus, uh, with the ap application of MRI, we started a new era of selective approach. That means that we started narrowing our indications for the limb dissection, which is first and foremost based upon the size of lateral uh, group of lymph nodes according to MRI. So actually uh, take into account the um, low, uh, lowly localized cancers and uh, just advanced forms. We also analyzed within this period of time 120 patients with limb dissection, and uh, the results of uh, the overall number of lesions, and you can see mean number of um, leaf nodes and uh, the ones uh, which were which are impaired. Now, um, mainly we quote from Japanese authors because the Western authors do not publish or. Uh, uh, anything on this matter. This is not the first uh, time that we demonstrate this data. Some of you are already familiar with this study. What we actually detected, parerectal uh, and mesorectal lymph nodes are most frequently um, impaired, and the uh, uh, intermediary lymph nodes, I would say, it's uh, much smaller in number. When it comes to paraortal and apical, uh, that's something that we touched upon yesterday during surgery. This is the group of uh, lymph nodes where we almost never have uh, lesions, but such application uh, using MRI uh, shows the lateral involvement of 29.2%, uh, and I would like to compare these to intermediary lymph nodes. You can see this group of lowly localized uh, cancers with um, 
uh, intermediate relief nodes, you can see that lateral involvement will be much more frequent. That means lymph nodes, it's not uh, actually above, but they are lo localized uh, along the uh, inferior uh, mesentery artery. We analyzed also the um, prognostic model, uh, which we called a uh, model of our uh, clinic and uh, low invasive surgery. It was grounded upon the uh, monofactorial analysis, and which showed that the major risk factors of lateral lymph node involvement are uh, the uh, um, MVI, uh, also the how um, high the tumor is, is localized, and also the size of lymph nodes, lateral lymph nodes. But if you look at each of these factors alone, none of them is influential over the uh, lymph node uh, involvement. The specificity is not high enough. But if you take if you take them as a complex, and if you bring them down into one scale, according to which you can uh, analyze all these signs within one prognostic model, you receive quite a good mathematical model, which uh, unfortunately you cannot call an indicative uh, model, as it is uh, based upon five separate factors. But if uh, you have uh, point 0.23 and above, if you have this uh, index, then we consider that we have quite high risk of lateral lymph node involvement. Of course, we received subsequent documents uh, for such mathematical model, for such calculation, and we decided to verify it uh, in uh, 50 cases, which uh, enrolled patients with high risk who were selected by means of multifactorial criteria and also patients with low risk, where the lymph nodes were enlarged, but they were outside of this line. What we received, as a matter of fact, all the patients and we couldn't, by our criteria, we couldn't uh, just, uh, we couldn't but remove them. So bilateral limb dissection was performed in all these cases. In retrospective analysis of 120 patients, um, impairment of the lymph nodes in the lymph nodes were detected in 29% uh, in high risk group, 63% of lymph node involvement and in the low risk According to our scale, low, low risk group, but with enlargement in the lymph nodes, there were no uh, nodes in the lymph nodes, no lesions. So, unfortunately, at the moment, and I would like uh, you to pay attention to this 63% uh, using this assessment scale of possible risk. Indeed. We cannot say that lateral limb dissection is a piece of cake. This means, uh, first of all, prolonged time of surgery. This is technically very demanding. And it also uh, in large, uh, increases the um, uh, hospital stay. And the most uh, sad thing is that we cannot overcome neurogenic uh, bladder in this group. It's approximately 2.5 uh, times more frequent that, uh, compared to the group of standard surgery without lateral limb dissection. According to other post-operative surgeries, we don't have any other major differences. So the overall relapse-free survival, we have this uh, group retrospective study. It's not randomized. I should say it right from the very start. It's uh, not randomized. But we were just selecting uh, patients for the comparison group, uh, taking into account five, uh, six criteria. Now you can see that the five-year survival In the lymph dissection group, um, 
relapse-free survival was 62% after lymph dissection, which matches Japanese data. And uh, in the group without lateral lymph dissection, it drops to 35.7%. Five years survival in this group out of 120 patients where we performed lateral lymph dissection. We compared with the lymph uh, node uh, uh, involvement and without. We don't know how to treat this phenomenon, but nonetheless, we received the following data. And we can share this data with you. Now, the application of this model in retrospective group out of 120 um, patients, we detected 28 patients with high risk of lateral metastasizing, and uh, we uh, decided this is an indication for uh, lymph, uh, lateral lymph dissection. So these are uh, patients for uh, prospective study. So in this, uh, by MRI, um, enlargement in the lateral lymph nodes was uh, marked in three out of 28 patients, and their maximal size was not higher than seven uh, mm. Millimeters. I must apologize. Just can we uh, can we speak for a minute more because we're outside the time frames? Yes, sure. So the majority of patients uh, in this group uh, su were suffering from the local relapse with the potentially impaired lymph nodes, and uh, probably there there will be some uh, benefits in this particular group of patients. We also analyzed the uh, radiotherapy, and I must say that radiotherapy does not um, bring down the risk for the lymph nodes. We are going to have a publication uh, recently, uh, very soon. And I will uh, move on to the uh, summary. So the fa risk factors for lateral uh, lymph node involvement are the following, uh, the ones that we have already talked about. Mathematical prognostic model allows us to uh, detect uh, lateral metastasis in 63.3 uh, cases, which is twice as effective uh, if compared to other criteria. Uh, uh, no adjuvant uh, RCT uh, does not uh, is, is not uh, sufficient for full uh, lateral lymph node elimination. So we need combination. And in high risk of lateral metastasizing, five years survival is significantly higher after lateral pelvic limb dissection uh, than without. Thank you for your attention.